What's going on guys? Welcome back to another formation vid where today we're going to be taking a proper look at the 4-2-3-1. Is it the best formation in the game this year or is it not? So if you are enjoying the content, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. It would be much appreciated. And if you're enjoying the content as well, make sure you do drop a thumbs up. That would be much appreciated as well. If you do have any other videos you'd like to see, make sure you do comment below and make sure you do check out our Twitter if you have any personal questions you want to ask me about your team, about anything like that. And I'll be sure to answer all of your questions. So today we're going into the 4-2-3-1. This is the current team I'm using. It's a proper like randy mix of players uh, at the moment, but I'm just kind of getting on gathering all my coins together to uh, get a better squad, but we are using the 4-2-3-1 today. Now the 4-2-3-1 is seen as the most popular formation in the game, and, and by some people, the best formation in the game. Now for me personally, is it the best formation in the game? I don't necessarily believe there is a best formation in the game. I think there are lots of good formations, and I think that there are some bad formations as well. Uh, I definitely believe that 4-2-3-1 is one of the best formations. It's certainly the most popular formation, obviously very, very difficult to uh, to break down, obviously very well organised and uh, a great counter-attacking formation. I think that's why it's popular this year, obviously suits the game style very, very well. Now these were the tactics that I personally, uh, when I use the 4-2-3-1 that I like to use, I like to use pressure on heavy touch. Um, I like to just have a little bit more attacking, obviously this is going to leave you uh, every now and again. Your team is kind of going to get bunched up, obviously uh, it's going to get caught in the press, so that transitional phase Sometimes you're going to get caught out on, you're going to leave a few gaps in your uh, midfield, in your defence and just kind of over your team. But you do have some examples where you will press the opponent really, really well. You'll steal the ball back and you'll create a couple of opportunities. So it's kind of that risk reward thing. You know, sometimes it will pay off and sometimes it won't. But I think having a little bit of risk in this game, certainly for me, it's the way I like to play and I find it to be very, very effective. Width and depth, I like to keep as standard as possible. Uh, five width, five depth. I don't like to really change those two things too much. I don't want to get too deep uh, with my defence because it's, you know, it just becomes that one depth drop back and, and we're not about that life. And in the offence, I don't like the, in the defence with width. I don't like it to be too wide because, again, it's going to... You know, the fact that you're playing on press already means that you're going to have some gaps over your team. But if you make your team even wider... You might think that's going to you know, solve the issues of people just spamming it down the wings, which it will, but it's going to leave a lot more holes in the middle of your team and make it a lot easier for people to play through you. Offensive style, me personally, I like to play long ball. Um, I've explained plenty of times this year, I find it to be a really effective tool, uh, You know, very good at uh, kind of putting those balls over the top, in behind, and uh, maybe getting some great counter-attacks. Width-wise, I've, I've, I've really come to like having a, a wider attack. Obviously, it's kind of the way... Uh, the most effective way to play the game this year, obviously using some pace on the wings and uh, hitting those balls on the outside channels is a very good way to uh, to score goals this year. So uh, I've, I found that about eighth is a good balance. You don't want to go too crazy on ten uh, because I still do like to play in the middle of the pitch, hold a lot of possession. Uh, that's kind of my way I like playing as well. So eighth is a good way to play. Players in the box, we like to keep standard on five. The thing to note about the uh, the tactics. The instructions are far, far more important than your tactics on any formation. So we're going to go and get into the instructions. Now, Alisson, first and foremost, this team this season, Alisson, if you're looking for a goalkeeper, this team this season, Alisson is ridiculous. The first goalkeeper I've actually used this year where he's actually insane. Like, he is so good, so I'm so lucky that I packed him. Comes for crosses, sweeper keeper, pretty uh, pretty standard stuff there. Sweep keeper is kind of the most important thing there. You definitely want your keeper on sweep keeper. Sometimes we'll come out. Clear a few balls that maybe you're uh, maybe if you don't have them on sweep keeper, you have to kind of control the keeper yourself. It's just kind of a bit of a farce. So definitely have sweep keeper on. In terms of the defenders, standard for me. If you've if you've been around this channel obviously for a long long time, which I appreciate you guys, appreciate all you guys being here. Stay back while attacking is a thing that we use all the time. Um, I don't like to go on balance. I don't think it's necessarily. Uh, I like I like the attackers to do the job, defenders to defend. So stay back while attacking for me is standard. Like I said, with the press on possession loss, you are going to find that every now and again your player is kind of going to be a little bit disorganised. Um, so maybe having them on stay back while attacking is great. If you have them on balance, obviously it's going to add to that issue, that chaos of uh, your players being sort of all over the place when, when you're pressing. So definitely recommend stay back while attacking if, if that's what you want to go with. The two CDMs, we've actually got a Cardi at CDM, which you know kind of shows where my team is at at the moment. The fact that I'm using team this season, a Cardi as a CDM. Uh, we've got man mark stay back while attacking. I've actually got them on aggressive interceptions and cover center. The reason why I've got them on aggressive interceptions, obviously we're playing press on possession loss. So the idea is to try and win the ball back quick. The fact that we're playing with the pressure on heavy touch, the, the idea is to try and win the ball back as quick as possible. And, and this was really, really effective when I was playing. I was winning the ball back really, really sharp, especially in the midfield. And that's because the aggressive interceptions. Now, 
like I said, the fact that we're playing pressure on heavy touch means your team is going to be a little bit disorganized at times. And having your CDMs on aggressive interceptions, they are sometimes going to go and try and intercept the ball and they're going to miss. And if they miss, it means you're going to be left a little bit open and exposed. But I don't mind that. For me, I like to play a little bit of a more attacking and aggressive style of FIFA. So I don't really mind that too much. But stay back while attacking you know, is the best way to play for your CDMs as well. Now, in terms of the three cams, we actually had them on all the same instructions. Now, a couple of people have mentioned to me to use them on free roam, all three cams on uh, on the free roam technique, and, and I used this, and it was it was effective. I don't think it's as good personally as just having the central one on free roam and the two outsides on stick to position, but it does work well. Um, again, it kind of is a little bit chaotic. You know, some, sometimes your players are running all over the place, and that's a positive it means it's very difficult for your opponents to pick up but it's also a bit of a negative because obviously uh you know your players aren't organized you don't know like if you're going to have that left winger out there so you might be in the middle of the pitch you might need to get that ball out to the left wing and if he's not there because they're on free roam they're kind of all over the place it does kind of make it a little bit difficult to attack so i'd recommend definitely keeping the wide players on stick to position and just the central cam on free roam you want him he's the most important player in this team in my opinion and if you get this guy right and you'll see him on free roam, you've got an absolutely incredible position. And then up front, we've got Hernan Crespo, obviously one of my favorite strikers. Uh, definitely going to be looking to replace him though soon because he's not quite fit for purpose at this age of the game. But getting behind, stay central, best way to play on this formation. Obviously, it's kind of more of a counter-attacking type formation. Um, so, you know, playing with those uh, balls in behind and that long ball technique is definitely the way you want to go. So with that being said, the 4-2-3-1. Is it the best formation in the game? Now, for me personally, I want to do a more detailed video on this, uh, maybe at some point later in the week. Is, is the 4 2 3 one the best formation in the game? I would say it's the most popular formation in the game. I wouldn't necessarily say it is the best formation in the game. I don't think there is a best formation. Now, somebody told, told me the other day, and I was having a good discussion with him about it, and, and he told me, look, I don't think there's the best formation in the game. For me personally, I played in weekend league this weekend. I was playing with that 4-2-4, those custom tactics. I finished 17-2. I played really, really well. Week before that, when it was a community team this season, I was playing with the uh, with these tactics, with 4-2-3-1, finished 17-3. So with two really wildly different formations, one quite defensive formation, one really attacking formation, still pretty much got the same result. So I don't think the formation is necessarily I don't think the 4231 is the best formation I would just I would probably reword that and say it's the most popular formation so we will get into a more in-depth look at what we uh, what we think about that topic so if you want to see that make sure you do drop a thumbs up on the video if you would like to see that if you are enjoying the content you found this useful make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you'd like to see any other videos make sure you do drop them in the comment section make sure you do follow us on twitter if you have any other questions and we'll answer them as quick as possible just massive thank you to everybody that has watched the video you guys have showed us really good support and i know i've let a lot of you guys down this year with some of the content so next year we are going to put a massive massive shift in and make next fifa our fifa so if you do enjoy the content as always make sure you drop a thumbs up that is all today guys have an awesome day i'm out